Welcome. This presentation is going to be about every physicist's favorite subject, dark energy, and I'm so glad to have you here watching. So without further ado, um, let's jump into these two pictures that are going to be the basis of this presentation. One picture is how cosmologists currently calculate the mass energy of the observable universe. And as you can see, it's all on one constant slice of time. Now, the other way to look at the universe is how we actually see it. We're at our current time and we look out in space and we're looking back in time. Due to the finite speed of gravity, which travels at the speed of light, we would also be feeling distant locations as those locations existed in the past. Because of hot Big Bang cosmology, those locations in the past that we're looking at and seeing and feeling gravitationally were hotter. So as you go back further and further in time, we should be feeling gravitationally hotter and hotter regions of space-time. And it turns out that all of the heat that we're feeling from the past because of hot Big Bang cosmology almost exactly equals the amount of missing dark energy in the universe. So this paper is going to give the details about how if you take into account the heat from the past that we're feeling at distant locations, you no longer need to force dark energy into your models to make up for 70% of the missing mass energy of the universe. So I could read you through the paper and probably put you to sleep in the process, but let's, for the interested observer, scroll through it slowly so you can read at your leisure, pause, rewind, do whatever you would like with the paper in regards to the speed of reading. Put me on mute if you want to as well. The introduction basically gives how cosmologists currently calculate the mass and the energy density in the current universe. The second section is going to review the details and the math of the Friedman model and the Lemaitre extension. Subsection B is going to dive into some of the hypotheses that we make when we say that a photon that has been redshifted, you need to account for its energy in the past as well at the current time you're observing it. Because that gravity that it exuded in the past is also just now reaching you today based on that higher energy. We're going to have more details here. And then the next section that we get into, we discuss the upper limit to the redshift calculation because when you're taking into effect the energy density from the past that you're feeling, we can't go back to a redshift of infinity. If we did, then we would be feeling infinite energy from the past. So cosmologists have chosen to determine that the highest energy that the universe likely started at was the Planck temperature. So we introduced something called the Planck redshift, saying that we're not in going to integrate the energy density of the photons comprising the CBR past what we call the Planck redshift, which is the redshift of the current cosmic microwave background radiation. Um, that would result in the Planck temperature. So 5.1 times 10 to the 31 is what we're going to refer to as the Planck redshift. And this section 2 is going to give some more of the details about how it is that 
cosmologists calculate volume, proper volume in the universe. And then equation 11 is going to highlight how we calculate volume in the universe we're proposing that you should be calculating as opposed to this universe where the volume is all at one constant slice of time. Now the interesting thing about this, that's the foundation of the paper, is if it was just a matter dominated model, this and this would yield the same mass because the volume just scales in the same way that the mass scales, assuming this is a circle, not a square. That the volume would scale in the same way that the mass density, mass energy density for that matter scales, and so these two masses would be identical. But you have to take into account the fact that there's radiation in our universe, a cosmic background radiation, whose energy depends not just on the volume, but it also depends on the wavelength. And it's going to be that relation that gives us the extra energy from the past that we're just now feeling today from the hot Big Bang, really from regions just further out in space that at earlier times were hotter than they are today. So the paper starts off with a radiation dominated model just to simplify things assuming no mass no matter and we get a nice equation 20 natural log term that dominates the past energy states of all the photons past our current time period these these energy states right here depend today on a natural log term of 1 plus z. And it gets a little bit complicated because in general relativity of course distances depend on the energy content not just the energy and that energy content is reflected in R and dr. We've chosen to do this paper calculating in regards to the dz element rather than the dr element, so you need to convert those. And then we eventually need to take into account that our real universe has matter in it. So if we do this calculation with radiation and matter, we can determine what the mass of this universe should be as opposed to the mass of this universe that cosmologists currently calculate. And so it just so happens that the mass of the past energy states of the cosmic microwave background radiation, i.e. the heat from the past because of the hot Big Bang cosmology that we know exists, the heat from the past in a model dominated by matter but with this small radiation component in it that the small radiation component is today adds up and 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 it depends essentially on a natural log term earlier in the paper and it turns out to be 5.194 times 10 to the 53 kilograms. Now, this component that is the heat from the past in this model how does that compare to the critical mass that we would have in the same matter dominated model and matter dominated, I mean today is matter dominated. How does the critical mass of all the matter to give a flat universe, spatially flat universe, how does that compare to this model over here? So all of the heat from the past ends up accounting for 70.86% of the critical mass 
that according to the Friedman equation will give us a fl spatially flat universe. And that number should raise a little bit of suspicion because it's very close to the amount of missing dark energy. So what this paper suggests is that the heat from the past actually is the missing dark energy. And you can derive an equation for distances because the distances are going to be a slightly different for this model. And you can use equation 32. Equation 32 multiplied by C over H naught and integrated is equation 34. So if you can integrate equation 32, which you can get by easily integrating the equation from using a definite integral, zero redshift to whatever redshift you're interested, you can integrate the equation and compare distances of type one super type 1a supernova data using this model that has zero we're going to put zero vacuum energy our omega z component we found out to be about 70 percent our omega r component which is the radiation component today was very very small far less than one percent um, you can plug that in and our omega matter term is going to be dark matter plus ordinary matter. Found that to be about 30%. You can plug that in and calculate distances. And you can compare that with the current cosmological model that has dark energy equaling about 70%. And you can get a distance calculation. And you can see that our model actually agrees very well up until about redshift of 1.4 1.5 it starts to deviate and certainly around 2 it starts to trail off and then as you can see we really start to converge towards the matter dominated model at higher and higher redshift and this curve comes down and does get closer and closer to the matter dominated model when you do the definite integral of equation 32. So if cosmologists could look out and determine distances for z equals, point, z equals 2, z equals 2.5, z equals 3, and if they do indeed see that there is no longer a need for an accelerated universe, i.e. that supernova aren't as dim as we thought they would be based on a dark energy model. If the, if the model starts to converge towards back towards a matter dominated model at higher redshift, then that would be a strong indication that we don't need dark energy and that the heat from the past of the hot Big Bang cosmology would account for not only the missing 70% mass energy in our universe, it would also account for the supernova redshift data and the distance and luminosity matching up more closely to a matter dominated model at higher redshifts, redshifts greater than two or three, for example. And there's, of course, the very important references 